welcome to this special edition of West Rail News, where we take you on one of the great train journeys of the world, our Indian Pacific. The 4,000 kilometre Trans-Australian Railway traverses the continent through some of the most desolate and isolated areas on Earth. Its operation, of necessity, must be slick, comfortable and efficient for the thousands of rail passengers who use the four-day Perth-Sydney service annually. During this program, we hope to give you a personal insight into this impressive operation of which West Rail plays a large part. Our first story concerns a person who knows most everything about the train, a person whose presence makes all the difference to the passengers. Is, uh, is essential duties to ensure that all passengers uh, that are travelling on train have tickets. Uh, that's part of, uh, of uh, a small part of our duties. The main duties is uh, to look after the needs of uh, passengers travelling on the uh, train. The duties are very varied from uh, assisting passengers with their luggage to um, heating up bottles of uh, milk for children, little babies, getting woken up in the middle of the night, uh, putting beds down. No, generally attending to the passengers' needs um, on the train is required. It's a lot of rewarding uh, parts, the satisfaction of, uh, of uh, doing the job uh, well, but uh, the most rewarding to me is the uh, thank you at the end of the journey. Passengers get off the, the uh, train and say thank you very much, we've uh, had a, an enjoyable journey. That is the most uh, rewarding part of the, uh, of the job. the Indian Pacific Service is superb and it turned out like clockwork by the highly organised catering staff. Our next story takes a look at the finely tuned team and just what it takes to get the food on the table. It's said that an army marches on its stomach, and no truer words were spoken when it comes to catering for the army of passengers aboard the high wheelers. Food is the number one topic on the mind of most travellers on a long journey, and the quality of that food can make or break their evaluation of the transportation service providing it. Westrail's concern about the priority attached to food in transit is shown clearly by the slick military-style operation at its forest field catering section. Well, uh, today I sent out on the India Pacific 25 kilo pork fillet and uh, about 35 kilo lamb to make, you know, fillet mignon. I have uh, 64 kilo porterhouse steak and uh, I have uh, leg lamb about 25 kilo. For the India Pacific, I make, you know, 144 meals, you know, for today. Everything fresh, first class, yes, of good quality, everything. Well, the train comes about five days a week on the per terminal, and after the per terminal, come in forest field to clean him up for food, you know, drinks, and they left for forest field 7.30 p.m. to per terminal. I have good stuff, you know. I have everybody working here over 20 years. The gym has worked with me about 24 years. West Rail's passenger meals are extensive and of a very high quality. And it's a tribute to the organisation at Forestfield that West Rail consistently receives high acclaim for its food standards from the travelling public. And after his 25 years in the section, does Michael still enjoy the food he works so closely with? Yes, very good. Yes, I join, yes. Forest Field Catering Section, providing top cuisine to an army of West Rail passengers. That's all right, yes. And great food it is too. Another part of the West Rail organisation that goes about its business in a similar slick manner is our travel centre. 
They're responsible for booking many of the passengers on the train and to other far-flung destinations around the world. Our cover story today focuses on the travel centre and how they operate in the competitive world of travel. Westrail is, perhaps surprisingly, the largest ground travel operator in the state. The Westrail Travel Centre in the city station complex caters for a whole range of holidays and recently represented Westrail at the Australian Travel Fair at UWA. Westrail actually have the largest range of uh, tours in Western Australia and um, as far as actual small ground content tours go, there's 24 tours each week. They can just cover the area from Exmouth in the north to Kalgoorlie to Esperance down to Albany. And um, we operate, as I say, 24 tours and they range from two days up to nine days in duration. Uh, in addition to what I've just said with the, the local tours in Western Australia, we do do Eastern States tours, the Murray River tours, and um, we're the agents, the general sales agents for Murray River and also with the Hawkesbury cruises in Sydney on the harbour there and we package those up with rail and uh, give you know, the clients have an opportunity to purchase those in a rail package set up. We consider ourselves the, the best wildflower tour operator in Western Australia. There's a couple of others but over the years I think we've proven we're the number one wildflower seller. With the numbers we've had our tours have been regularly full each year and we get big groups even from overseas as far as the USA uh, England, Europe itself and New Zealand, a lot of people from New Zealand go on them and the benefits in our wildflower tours are that we've got a botanist on each departure and a hostess and a coach captain so you've got three people looking after the people on the wildflower tours and any staff that want to come in we'll prepare to give them a part of our commission back and sell that at a discounted price so um, you know I think it's, it's worthwhile seeing us whenever you're going anywhere. So. The centre not only makes travel bookings but promotes all of Westrail's passenger services all over Australia. And they do a great job, with over 350 travel agents receiving Westrail information from it. The travel fair was a huge success in terms of public awareness of our products. All thanks to the enthusiastic team at the Westrail Travel Centre. And with me today I have Greg Ellis, Travel Promotions Manager of the Westrail Travel Centre and travel agents Leslie Cornell and Trish Honshaw. Ladies, Greg, welcome to the program. Firstly, Greg, what's the main role of Westrail's Travel Centre? The Travel Centre is the retail outlet for all Westrail products. Uh, its main purpose is the sale of country and interstate services with then our ancillary tour products. Uh, as well as international and interstate services of our competitors. We've also got centralised in the Travel Centre our advertising, promotions and product development area. Well Trish, what level of importance does the industry place on rail travel? Rail travel has always had its market share, but in the last 20 years I think that the retail travel industry has been dominated by the airlines and air-based products. Nowadays, there's a definite resurgence in the popularity of rail travel, and I think Westrail should gear up for it. Well, Leslie, how does Westrail compare with the airlines in regard to reservation bookings? Well, being in Geraldton, we make all our reservations with the local Geraldton office, and we have great difficulty in getting through to the office to make our reservations, and the quality of reservations is not uh, really good. It uh, doesn't, the bookings to me don't have enough information in them because if you have four Smiths travelling on the coach, well then they are just all Smiths. There's no identification to who the individuals are and I feel that they may get duplications in bookings. How do you see our system being improved? Well, by putting initials and titles into reservations, perhaps phone numbers and also maybe having a queue system to put agents on hold, especially when ticketing deadlines are uh, coming up on that day. If we don't get through, the booking's automatically cancelled. Well, the travel game is very competitive. Where do we stand compared with our competitors? Rail travel is a virtual monopoly in Australia. Uh, interstate rail competes against airlines and interstate road coach operators, but all operators offer a different service entirely. Rail travel still has that mystique and appeal to the public and its popularity is proved by the number of people on this train today. Well, Westrail has recently won a rather prestigious award. Can you tell us a little about it? Yes, 
West Rail's new train, the Australian train to Bunbury, won the Sir David Brand Award for Tourism in the category of Tours and Tourist Transportation. It was also interesting to note that our second product, West Rail Wildflower Tours, was the second finalist for that award. Well, congratulations. An excellent result. Ladies, Greg, thank you very much for being on this special edition. I certainly hope you enjoy the rest of your trip. Turning now to our very popular viewers video segment. Again, we've received an excellent response with some great and interesting vision. We're taken to Three Springs for a look at a major track upgrade performed by WA's only specialised re-sleepering gang. The job requires the replacement of thousands of sleepers and took roughly four months to complete. The team of 22 has been rated on par with the best in the world. And from what we've seen, we have no reason to dispute that. Well done, guys. And with the heavy rains we've recently experienced, Central Division sent us some extraordinary footage of washaways in the eastern wheat belt. The traumatic vision was shot four days after the downpour. And as you can see, the damage was still not yet repairable. Coincidentally, we have some footage of a drain clearer sent in from the Division Engineer Narogen's office. The unit is used to enable drainage of water adjacent to track and to prevent silting and weed growth. It's being used here on the southwest main line prior to the advent of the winter rains. And I'm sure the guys from the eastern wheat belt would wish for as dry an outcome. Thanks to you all for your video contributions and please keep that great video footage coming in. The Indian Pacific journey takes us past Wyala in South Australia, the home of BHP steel sleeper manufacture. As I mentioned in our last edition, railway sleeper requirements have started to change, with 100,000 narrow gauge and 30,000 standard gauge steel sleepers ordered by Westrail for this year alone. We take up the story first in Western Australia. Our mighty forests are a heritage we must protect. In Australia, they're dwindling by 2% every year. So it's good news to hear that technology is coming to their rescue. The manufacture of railway sleepers has traditionally relied on the supply of enormous quantities of timber. Now, BHP has perfected a technique of producing steel sleepers that are better than the old timber product. Tracklock have been developing the, uh, the Tracklock steel sleeper system for about the last 10 years. We we're manufacturing 100,000 uh, sleepers at, at the moment. We commenced uh, manufacturing in March, and uh, we anticipate to conclude production at the end of October. The new sleepers are manufactured at BHP's Tracklock plant in Wyala. Their pre-sprung form gives much more resilience than their timber cousins, and their lighter design gives an advantage of lower transport costs. Steel, of course, has a longer operational life than timber, and this means cost savings for Westrail. The plant is producing 3,500 narrow-gauge sleepers per week for Westrail, and Tracklock's quality control keeps each sleeper within fine parameters. Westrail has been evaluating steel sleepers on the Great Southern Line since 1986, and our latest purchase sees 80,000 sleepers destined for the Avon to York and the Picton-Lambert sections. Over the next few years, Westrail expects to increase its use of steel sleepers, mixing them with the timber product. This heralds not only a lower maintenance overhead for Westrail, but a reduction in the demand for timber from our forests. And that has to be a good thing for everyone. Of course, a competitive rail system is all about getting to a destination quickly and efficiently. And the Trans-Australia Line is an important artery, not only for passenger travel, but for freight too. Interstate Freight is our third largest revenue earner, with over two million tonnes carried in the last year. And this line is the key. With the story, here's Bob Stewart. The Kewdale Freight Terminal. Early Monday morning, as the Westliner arrives from Adelaide with a full load. Our interstate freight business represents around $46 million a year. And to protect our market share, Westrail's new freight task force is making big changes to improve our performance. The uh, new intermodal yard has now been designed uh, to uh, accept full-length trains 
from uh, direct from the eastern states into Kewdale. Uh, instead of stopping at Forest Field and being shunted out, the, uh, the new West Liners will arrive in the intermodal yard as one train bypassing Forest Field. Currently we have a Bellotti, a 28 tonne fork, a 23 tonne fork and the gantry to, uh, to handle the traffic as it is now. And we have currently on order and are expecting in a roughly September uh, two more new Bellottis. The West Liner is, uh, comes in from Melbourne, uh, transshipped at Islington and Islington top it up with their own West Liner traffic comes through to here and it's a two day run and uh, providing it's on time here uh, we have no problem in, in servicing the customers. Other initiatives being examined include rail loop alterations on the east-west line and improvements to high-speed bogies. The redevelopment of the Kewdale intermodal area is expected to be completed by March 1990 at a total cost of $6.2 million. The changes demonstrate Westrail's commitment to gaining a greater share of interstate freight business and will, without doubt, improve our turnaround of wagons and provide our clients with a higher standard of service. Thanks, Les. Enjoyed it immensely. Thank you very much. Well, that just about wraps up our special interstate travel edition of Westrail News. If you're thinking of travelling east, I can honestly say we thoroughly enjoyed it. And we leave you today with a story about someone who may just be thinking about such a trip. See you next time. Hello. Oh, hello. Is that the home of Debbie and Robert Wilde? Yes, it is. Right. Well, I guess you've heard about 96FM's Rock Words. Oh, you You've won 50,000 oh, cash. Please, just hang on one is that you, Debbie? Yes. Is Robert there with you? Uh, no, he's just gone to work. Tell us something about yourself, Debbie. Do, uh, do you stay at home to work or what? No, I've just had a little baby. Oh, really? Boy or a girl? A uh, little girl. I've just had to put it down. I'm shaking. What for you people out there in TV land reckon Sid Vicious' hair looks like a stunned mullet? Well, you should have seen Bobby Wilde when he heard he won 50000 Congratulations, Bob, on your windfall. Thanks, Pete. Well, how does it feel to be 550,000? <laughs> <laughs> a lot lighter on the shoulders, mate, that's for sure. Yeah. So they gave us the big one first, yeah. and uh, it didn't sink until I saw it. You, know, you actually see the $50,000 written there, yeah. and uh, I only fainted when I saw that. And they, uh, and they handed us the small check, the real one, yeah. and we looked at that, but uh, we got this big one, we're going to hang it up on the wall. You know? Every morning I'll get up and look at it. <laughs> Congratulations, Robert and Debbie Wilde, the winners of $50,000 cash in Rockwoods from the West Australian and 96 FM Stereo.